we will continue our last week lesson, which is functioning of ecosystem. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the ecological pyramid. You should be able to describe different types of ecological pyramids. You should be able to state the progressive diminution of energy in the feeding chain. And you should be able to state the law of thermodynamics and the application to ecological pyramids. Our key vocabularies are trophic pyramid, ecological pyramid, autotroph, producers, consumers, biomass, energy, productivity, and the trophic level. What is an ecological pyramid? An ecological pyramid is a graphical presentation of different relationships between various organisms in an ecosystem. This different trophic level that we learned last week are represented by bars, by bars that form the pyramid. They are now represented by bars that form the pyramid. The, 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 these bars are what we call the ecological pyramid. The order of this trophic level is always based on who eats whom, and usually it represents energy flow. We have this as a trophic level, where you see the trophic level being represented by different organisms. And as you go along each of these bars, there's always a decrease as you go from the producers along to the higher trophic levels. You see a decrease both in number of energy and the number of organisms. This will bring us to different types of ecological pyramid. We have three types of ecological pyramid, which are the pyramid of numbers, the pyramid of biomass and the pyramid of energy. Now the pyramid of numbers. In the pyramid of numbers, it shows how many individual organisms that are in each trophic level without consideration of their size. There is always a decrease in the number of organisms as you go along the higher trophic levels. So the pyramid of numbers differs depending on the ecosystem. Yes, because at times you can see a diverted pyramid in different ecosystems. So note that, that you can see different modes of pyramid where the producers might be at the up, upper side, depending if it's in an aquatic environment or not. So, but here, let's look at this typical pyramid. You see that as you go along the pyramid, the number of organisms decreases. It decreases. It gives us a quick idea. If you look at the pyramid, it will give us a quick idea to determine the abundance of organisms that constitute each trophic level. So with this, at the base, we have the producers, which are the most abundant, and you see other ones successively coming. And as they go, they, they decreases rapidly. So it, it shows the size of individual organisms along each of these trophic levels. This is the pyramid of numbers. The second one is the pyramid of biomass. In the pyramid of biomass, you can be able to estimate the number of the size of organisms at each trophic level. So in the pyramid of biomass, you solve some problems of showing the regular decrease in the biomass of organisms. Remember, bio, living, mass, size, this with size. So we are looking at the size of different living organisms at each of these trophic level. So biomass also, just like the pyramid of number, biomass decreases as we move from the first trophic level through other trophic levels. So you see it that it, it's obtained. For you to obtain a biomass, it is obtained by first counting the number of organisms, number of organisms at each trophic level, and then you weigh them. If you weigh them, then you can be able to estimate the average number of organisms that is in a particular trophic level. 
or ecosystem. Now, if you, know, you can be able to identify here that there is a decrease in each of these trophic level, 10% decrease at each of these trophic level. We have 1,000 kilogram here. We have 100 here, which is 10% of 1,000. We have 10 here, which is 10% of 100. And we have one here, which is 10% of 10. Now, this is the way living organisms at each of these trophic level decreases based on their size. The third one is pyramid of energy. The pyramid of energy tries to measure the amount of energy that is present at each of these trophic level. Amount of energy in, that is present in the organism at each trophic level. It is the most, it is the most useful trophic level. Note it. The pyramid of energy is the most useful trophic level because it shows us the overall pictures, the overall pictures of the functionable nature of every of each of these communities. Each of these communities. It, it because it will throw more light on the amount of food amount of food that passes from one trophic level to the other. That's why we say that the pyramid of energy is very, very important. Unlike the other two previous ones, you see that here you see the total amount of energy at each of these trophic level. So you are not just knowing the total amount of energy. You will be able also to estimate the amount of energy that lost at each of these trophic level. You see here that as you go along the trophic level, there is a decrease in the amount of energy. So you will see that only 10% of the total energy that enters each of these trophic level passes to the other. Only 10%. So the rest of the energy is used. Yes, it's used on their metabolic activities. It's used on their metabolic activities. So the producers has about 1,000, 10,000. You see that 10% of is 1,000. We have 10% of 1,000, which is 100. 10% of 100, which is 10. So it's trying to tell us that at each of these trophic level, that it's only 10% that moves from the producers to the primary consumers. This will tell us and or explain how is this energy being transformed from one organism to the other. Because we know definitely the that the ultimate source of energy is the sun. The sun is the ultimate source of energy. And with us knowing that, we know that plants, they are photosynthetic. They have the ability to apply the law of thermodynamics, which is his first law states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but can be converted from one form to another. So, energy has been created naturally the sun is the natural energy which is the ultimate source of energy where other forms of energy comes from so the plant will take this solar energy and convert it into light energy they will trap the sun and convert it into chemical energy sorry they will convert the light energy into chemical energy if they convert the chemical energy, they store this chemical energy as starch. Remember, carbohydrate, plants store food as starch. They will convert it into carbohydrate or uh, possibly other forms of food. And this food, remember you and me, we definitely eat them. So this, this chemical energy we will come and eat them because plant has stored them. If we eat them, we will convert them into kinetic energy. Motion. We can walk, we can move from one place to another. We can do domestic activities. We convert it into mechanical energy too. So if you look at it, you see that we have converted the energy from one form to another. Plants converted the energy from one form to another. And on the same process, you can be able to talk from the energy you obtain from this you can be able to talk, which is sound energy. Some, some insects like the firefly, we always come and feed on this. If they feed on this, what will they do? They will also produce a light energy. 
that will produce a light energy. So you can see there are different forms in which living organisms can convert one energy from one form to another. But this energy cannot be created and they cannot be destroyed. They can only be converted from one form to another. Now, the second law of thermodynamics states that during the conversion of energy, that some proportion of it is converted to heat energy, which is no longer biologically useful. This is just telling you that during the conversion of energy from one form to another, that it is not 100% efficient. That some amount of energy are lost as heat. So we look at how these energies, the reason why this conversion of energy is not 100% efficient, energy losses in the ecosystem. Now, if we look at the solar energy, which is the sun, the solar energy, the sun is the ultimate source of energy, as I have said. So, but only half of the energy from the sun reaches the earth. If 50% of energy from the sun reaches the earth. So, here are the other ones. The half is always either, either is being reflected back to the, uh, to the space or absorbed by the atmosphere. So, you can see that that 50% that is coming to the air, not even all of them that will be utilized here. How? Because some, uh, some plants, as a result of vegetation, yes, we collect some for food production. Is this, uh, some of them can be even reflect, reflected by vegetation. Even some worms, some worms of the vegetation can even, we even take some. The soil or even air, we take even the remaining ones, they will evaporate. You go to the water bodies. Water bodies, we collect some of them. So you can see it just that we only have about some percentage of it. Plants only have about, let's say, about 20% of this energy that they will use for their food production. So these producers, the conversion of this, this percentage of energy that they have into chemical energy is what we call gross primary productivity. Remember, the conversion of light energy into chemical energy is what we call gross primary productivity. Now, these product primary producers, we make use of this energy. They will store it in form of food, and they will also make use of them for their metabolic activities. The consumers will feed on them. They, they, they will feed on them uh, on, the, on, the, on the net production, uh, primary production. They will feed on this net primary production. And some of them, or the proportion of this energy, they, are, they will store it in their tissues. They will, make use, they will make use of it for their metabolic activities. Some of them will be stored. And the, some of them will be released as heat. During respiration, heat will be released. So during this process, you see that some of the organisms here will die. When they die, the remaining energy that is locked up in their tissues will be re released to the environment. Either these ones that have been released in the environment, they can be released as unusable energy. Some of them will be reused by the composers. So majority of the energy have been wasted. The composer will take some. The composer will take some here. While some of them will be given back as loss of heat. The same thing happens at the secondary consumers. The composer will take some of the energy, some of them will be reflected back. They will make use of some of it. So from one level to the another, it is only, I have been saying this, it is only 10% of energy that is being transferred from one trophic level to another. Now let's look at this, how a monkey converts energy. A monkey will make use of this, uh, of this energy. If the, sun, if the sun gives energy to plants, they will convert it to chemical energy. The monkey will make use of this energy. After making use of this energy, or uh, this chemical energy, the monkey, the monkey will, using its muscles, it will convert the chemical energy into the chemical energy, whereby it can be able to do some work. The monkey will convert the mechanical energy into kinetic energy, motion. So uh, during this process, you see conversion of energy. And at each of these steps, energy is raised because metabolic activities will take some energies as a result of heat. So 
some amount of energy are being released as heat. Conversion of energy is not 100% effective.